I'm Anne Murray. And I'm My Lut. And this is the new normal. And we're going to talk about dating and relationships and intimacy. Hmm. You know, I had this really good friend of mine who, who he actually had anal cancer. And we were talking about sexual health and getting it back afterwards and how it was so hard for me because I really thought it was gone. Like I thought it was lost. And just like you, I felt a little broken. Things didn't feel the way that they felt before. I didn't know how to work anything. And he said to me, just put it on pause. And it really like hit me. We rush so quickly after a diagnosis to try to get back to that normal. This isn't an easy process especially when you've had a hormone, hormone, hormonal induced cancer or had parts of your body removed. I mean, how do you get it back? You have to find other ways. And so if you just put it on a pause for just a minute and get yourself mentally, maybe physically to a place where then, okay, let's look at our sexual health because it is sexual health. I mean, there's physical health, mental health, and there is sexual health. We all need attention. It doesn't necessarily have to be intercourse all the mm -hmm. time. It can be, you know, kissing and touching and Love and real nice. Um, it could be a million other things. You just have to find that thing. You just don't have to do it all at once. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a really good point. And I think maybe that's something that I just need to keep in mind. But it's kind of difficult, you know, whenever you're trying to be like intimate and, and you do other things and they're great and everything is great. But then you always want to go back to, you know, think about pre-cancer yeah and how different it was mm -hmm. and now it's like it's I'm like that was so easy back then it's not so easy anymore I'm like I want that back <laughs> right but that's what you know that long journey is and getting to know yourself and you're not broken that's not even part of it and I know how you feel about that because I can remember you know not even wanting to take my shirt off because then you're going to see all my scars and I'm not going to have nipples you're going to go to touch my chest and it's embarrassing and you feel like you're just defective. We're sitting here dressed up, feeling, you know, looking a certain way, but that doesn't mean that's how we feel on the inside. And that's a hard thing to tell somebody, especially when you want to get sexy with them. <laughs> right? I was trying, well, you know, the dryness issue. So I was trying this uh, lubricant and I thought that maybe this would be helpful has CBD in it, and it's supposed to be great, whatever. So I tried it, and it was just like, when I was trying to be, you know, to have an intercourse, like, it was burning. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I can't, I can't. And then what I did is, like, later on, I tried my toy, mm -hmm. and I tried the same lubricant, and I realized and I think it's the lubricant that was, because I'm like, even with the toy, it was burning. Right. And I was like, wait a second, I think it's this damn lubricant. <laughs> and it probably was. Yeah, so I have to try something different. So actually, that might be a good thing. Like, try multiple. Like, Absolutely. Don't go with just one, and just because it says, you know, it's supposed to, like, help with the pain, it, you know, it, it actually might not, might not be and, it. And the dryness does, I don't think people understand just how incredibly dry it is. Um, my girlfriend had taken me to go to this you know, a uh, spa-like place. And part of it was you sit in a salt bath like you're sitting in the Dead Sea. Oh, nice. Yeah, not so great when you're completely dry. Oh. And I laid in it, and I mean, I got up screaming. The, it, like you're saying, like, it hurt so bad. Well, they didn't know. They were like, what is going on? I'm like, I think it's because I'm so dry because the salt, the salt water kind of absorbed in. And I mean, they were hosing me down. It was comical. Oh, yeah, <laughs> terrifying all at the same time. My point is, is, you do have to try different things in your areas, whether you're, you know, exploring yeah. parts with a partner or whatever, because the partner might not like it either. Yeah. But this is two way. If that partner is not having fun and enjoying mm -hmm. putting the lube on and playing with the toys with you, then you're not going to have a good time mm -hmm. and it's going to be even harder for you. Yeah. 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 I thought we were going to talk about a mirror. Oh yeah. So, so the mirror, I wanted to ask you this question and you know, growing up in, in you know, in, with immigrant parents, um, you know, sex is such a 
a, a voodoo topic, right? You don't really so talk about it. parents won't be watching this episode. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I had in school, high school, no, not through college, but in high school, they teach you about, well, maybe even elementary, a little bit, right? But you don't even get that much education there, which yeah. I think is so bad. Like you, I think kids need to be taught about their bodies a little bit earlier, especially as you're mm -hmm. going into puberty and seeing all the changes that you go through. Um, I never really looked at myself down there to see what it looked like. And I was so shy about it. Um, and so I wanted to ask you, did you, have you ever looked? A hundred percent. I've put a mirror between my legs a billion times. I've also had four kids, so I want to see what damage it did. <laughs> <laughs> That's the God honest truth. But afterwards, after everything, I wanted to look because I thought in my head, you know, like you said, you're broken. Like, I'm like, what is not working down there? There's gotta be something not working. It actually helped bring my arousal back. Not, I mean, not because I was attracted to my part. It was because I saw it working again. Mm -hmm. And that was exciting to me. And ridiculous that I just admitted that, but we're <laughs> going to go with it anyways. Um, it helped me get back to where I was. I think a lot of times we have this complete misconception that it's gone and it's never coming back. That is not true. Again, we said it before. This is a process. It takes a long time. You got to be patient with your body. It's been through a lot. It has been through a lot. And to get that sexual health back could take a little bit of time. But the more you play around, the more you play with your toys and you try different lubes and you try different partners. I'm not telling you to be promiscuous, but please, <laughs> please use, use protection. But you can get there. You just, it, everything has to be in, in sync. Mm -hmm. The lube, knowing your body, and whatever your partner is. And it's whether, the mirrors. And some mirrors. Maybe lots of mirrors all around. Yeah. So ladies, go and check it out. If you have And gentlemen. And gentlemen. And gentlemen. Too. Yeah. Let's not forget those boys. <laughs> That's true. They have to check their parts out too. Yes. First of all, I can't believe we're even talking about all of this, but I think it's so great because I know there's so many people that, you know, are feeling similar to what we're feeling or maybe have a partner that's feeling those ways. But the truth is that you have to... What is the word I'm looking for? You have to lose a little bit of inhibition mm -hmm. because what was normal for you before, whether it's, you know, having sex, you know, missionary position, I don't care whatever the position is. And that was the only thing that really turned you on. And now things are different. Lots of other ways to do things. You know, there's, let's just be honest. We're all adults here. There's oral sex. Mm -hmm. There's just touching. I, I mean, like I'm okay with it. but see as women we again like it's hard for a woman to let that go like there's something about it that at first you're like I can't believe I'm letting this person do this but once you let it go you can really let it go okay All and right. satisfying yes. your partner the same way that's so so important because once you get intimate like I'm in my head and it's so hard to get me out of there. Oh, but, you're like, no one's business. Oh my God. Oh my God. And it's like, as if I'm going to rain. Wait. Oh my God. I think did I, I, did I do it right? Who? Wait. No. Some, someone. Oh, maybe it's like move. Wait. Someone's oh, wait. going over. He's someone's going to knock on the door. <laughs> he doesn't want to be here anymore. Why isn't he touching me there? Totally. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait, wait, that, that, that See, feels really good, but if, like, I, but if I say something, the woman's going to go away. Don't talk, don't talk, don't talk, don't talk. You know what? Turn some music on for one. Loud. That helps, music, that know, helps get your head music. focused on something else. And there's lots of sexy tunes out there. Yeah. Maybe if, you know, a cocktail is your thing or, you know, cannabis is your thing, find ways that you can relax yourself a little bit. Do you watch any, like, porn or... No, that's just not my thing. I, I'm not either. It's I'm just not, not my thing. I feel thing. like it doesn't, like... Mm -hmm. But, like... And I think porn's like, like, what if you're like, any, like, any of like your partners, like, if they yeah. want to, I understand that. I do think you have to be careful with it sometimes, especially in what we've gone through because, you know, um, our bodies are not perfect like porn stars and that can make, it could make your partner feel a little insecure. Just yeah. gotta be careful there. And I think part of it, you know, you know, my favorite sentences, communication, 
is it's the best lubrication. lubrication. <laughs> so talk to them. Like if you're, if that's what your partner's into, then maybe there's something you guys can work through to get yourself there. And, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, to go send your, your partner nudes. That's not what I'm saying, but a cute little picture with you smiling and a bathrobe or a towel wrapped around you, you know, that can kind of get you excited for the rest of the night. You know, you have all of the things that we just talked about in your head constantly. When I, when we get to that part, and that's why I was saying to you, if you can make yourself feel good, you almost remove that sexual tension and the unhealthy sexual tension. And you can kind of get to know someone in a different way and without the pressure of it. So that's a, a really good point that you just made, right? So if you can make you feel, yourself feel good, do you forego that in the relationship at the at No, I think that becomes a community job. Okay. You know, you both okay. can do it together. Because it's like, well, I can do this. I mean, if, if, I don't, if, I'm, if, I don't, if I don't climax with you, then... You can climax after. I can do it myself. <laughs> And you can watch like there's like there's other ways that we can do this. This is exactly what I, what we were saying. Right. It's not just, OK, get on top. Let's go. OK, you're done. Let's be done with it. Come on. Yeah. We all want more than that. Yeah. So the only way to get that is to play around and see what works and what doesn't. And if you both ain't coming, then you both leave him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you both got to get there. And, but it's not going to happen in five minutes and 10 minutes. It might take a little bit longer. And it just doesn't have to be in the bedroom. True. There's other places you can fool around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kitchens, living rooms, bathrooms. Oh, yes. Basements. I don't know. Yeah. Pools. Actually, I'm not. Yeah. So, that might be a little harder. Um, I have a confession to make. I don't think I've ever really faked it. I just haven't. <laughs> Is this where I step up? <laughs> I have hundred percent faked it. Really? I just multiple times. I I'm like, if it doesn't happen, I just I'm like, it's not happening. It's or it's just not happening today. And oh my god, that <laughs> poor dude must have been like, oh my god. I no, suck. because then it's like, you know, it goes to the other end. Okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'll take care of you. At least, you know, some I'm I'm good. I'm like, I but what we did to get to where we are, like it felt good anyway. But I'm being honest, I just could I can't well, I, mean, I don't want to fake it like, oh, you know, like and I just can't I can't even I can't even pretend to fake it Um I totally <laughs> want to do a one hearing about Sally right now, but I'm not going to <laughs> um, <laughs> um I'm just flabbergasted that you've never faked it. I, mean, I, I think almost don't. every woman I, I know has faked it. No. And I think that part of it is as women, you almost get close to there and you, again, you feel this, oh my God, I can't believe I feel this good. Why do I feel this good? I got to stop this. I shouldn't be feeling this good. You know, it's, it's, it's ingrained in our, in our yeah. DNA. Um, and I don't think a lot of men understand that. I'm not faulting them for that. I think because as women, we haven't said exactly what my lot said. Look, and I didn't get there, but it was really awesome. Like it felt really good. And I was like, that's, that's a great statement to be able to say, but how many people have really said that? I can guarantee you not mine. Wow. Well, maybe you guys should. <laughs> because I, actually what you could potentially do is get your partner to really Find the spots that work for you both ways. But you this know? is, you know, like, okay, we talked about 20 minutes. Sometimes it could be a half an hour, 45 minutes. It could go an hour. And it's, it's, getting, there's so many men right now watching this. It's like, just getting <laughs> in your head. And it's, you know, like you get so close. Yes. And then something happens that brings you right back down. And then you get close again and you come back down and you're just like, oh, you know what? Forget it. This is not going to happen because there's just like too many right. things. I'm too in my head right now. It's, it, it's just not going to happen. And you're right. You do. Get and so at that point, head. it's like, you know, this was awesome, but it's just not like this is awesome. But I'm gonna go home and use my toy. I'll see you later, deuces. Peace out. You definitely are saying that, but I mean that's because you know your body, though, too. I guess I never really thought of it that way. You know what you like and what you need to get yeah. there, and it, that the thing is communicating that then with the partner. Right, that's the hard so part. So that. You because know, there's also a little embarrassment about it, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I know we joke around all the time about masturbation. It's like a big joke, but it's also like embarrassing that you do do that, which is ridiculous because it's a, it's a human mm -hmm. function. And if we weren't so embarrassed about it, maybe we could, you know, let loose a little bit more. And like I said, let that inhibition come out so that you can get to where you need to with your partner. Mm -hmm. Most men 
are okay, like admitting they're the master of their domain. They have no problem with that. But that's what I was saying to you before, that women, they don't they don't always sit like we're sitting two girlfriends talking about it, talking about putting a mirror and checking things out. They don't do that because it's embarrassing, which is so ridiculous to me. Talking about it actually helps you understand where where how to get there mm-hmm. and shows that you are human and you want to feel good. Yeah. That's a stigma that needs to be broken. It really does. And, you know, poor men in the same re- regards, if they're in a, with all their buddies and they're all talking about watching porn or, you know, seeing some chick and or seeing some guy, whatever it is that makes them happy, and they talk about masturbating. And there's that one guy that maybe has ED, erectile dysfunction because of treatment or because of whatever. And that can make them feel like less of a man. Mm-hmm. And I'm here to tell you that you are not less of a man. You have other body parts that work just fine for us. You just hook up and you'll be good. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not dating yet. Um, <laughs> it's Wait, okay. Is that on your profile? No. Not at all. <laughs> um, I just think it's okay. Like it, I wish a guy would be honest with me about mm-hmm. that. I really do. Because that if I, if, if I was with a guy and they could not hold an erection, I would immediately think it was me. Yeah. I would a hundred percent think, Oh my God, this is me. I can't, I can't arouse this person. My body's a mess. They don't want me. I would a hundred percent think that I would much rather that person say to me, look at, I, you know, I have some health issues going on. You know, I can't always hold an erection, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, all right, let's go. Let's try to make this happen. There's other things we can use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some um, toys. (laughs) We've covered so much here and I'm so excited that we did because this is a topic that, you know, I'm, you know, pretty self-conscious about, you know, I need to go home and I need to take that mirror more often. It's not like I, it's not, it's not like I've never done it, but I need to do it more because I feel even in my own home, in my own, you know, in a private setting, taking that mirror, I still feel a little bit embarrassed. Like, oh my, oh my God, should I be doing this? Is this okay? Mm -hmm. And so, yes, my lead, it's okay to do that and do it with pride and do it often. So I'm, I'm going to, um, that's my challenge. I'm going to do that. Um, I think in general, like we should all just take kind of pride in who we are and in ourselves and just allow ourselves to feel comfortable and explore and we don't have to have the answers. And thank you for, you know, kind of showing me that because I've, I mean, I'm having such a fluid conversation with you and I'm feeling good about it. I love it. And I think we've been through a lot of crap. We've been through a lot of crap throughout this process, journey, whatever you want to say. And it's okay to feel good now. It's okay to take that time and enjoy your body. It's gotten you through some crap and make it feel really, really good. Toys included. So that's toys. This is our new normal. (laughs) What's yours? What are you doing later? Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing later? later? <laughs> I guess it's my turn. Your turn. I'm a little scared. I'm just gonna pull something out. Like, it's in a pouch. <laughs> Chargers. I kind of recognize this. <laughs> you recognize this? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, they're cable wires for. Oh my goodness. Uh, so, do, well, why don't you say it? You go ahead. Um. Well, they are for <laughs> sex toys. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great because you can plug this into just about anything. <laughs> Makes it really easy. And it even comes in a little pouch, which I kind of like because you know what? No one needs to know what you do in private. <laughs> All right. Well, my story with, uh, you know, what this reminds me of. Well, first of all, um, I mean, we, we go down a different route for this in a separate episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but finding, finding, uh, not being afraid anymore right. of your, of, of experimenting something that you know i think i was afraid of doing you know younger Mm -hmm. and uh i feel like this gives me some kind of strength in 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 that area empowers you makes you take control of your body and feeling good 
But it also reminds me that you don't have to use batteries anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't even know if I ever tried any of those without batteries. 